Good afternoon, everyone. We're glad you've joined us for this user webinar on proxy registration. Some of you are back in your campus offices. Chuck and I had a meeting this morning with a customer that were back in their offices. It was great to see that. And I'm curious, um, are you at, on campus or at home today? Drop me a note in the chat box and let me know. Where are you joining from today, home or office? Got a quiet group here. I guess I need to wake them up. While you're thinking about that, trying to decide where you are, I'm going to tell you that today Jason's going to share what proxy registration is. He's going to give us some tips and tricks and show you some of the recent updates that have been made to this feature. You'll leave proxy professionals. If you have questions along the way, drop those in the chat box too. Chuck and I are monitoring that and we'll get you some answers or get you to Jason for a response to the group. Jason, I'm taking a look here. Whoa, most people look like they're still at home, but there are some that are back in the office. That's good news, good news. So Jason, I'm gonna turn things over to you to share all about proxy registration. Thank you, Sharon. Welcome, everyone, again, to our webinar on proxy registration. This is a feature that's been around in ACE Web since uh, before DIRT, I believe. So it's by no means a new feature, but we have done some revamps to it. And a few years back, we, we added some additional features. So it'll be kind of a refresher if you're new to ACEware um, or if you just weren't aware of this feature at all, this will be a, a nice refresher for you. So. Let's jump right in. So a quick look at our agenda today. We're going to talk about what proxy registration is. Uh, we're going to look at how you enable it. And then we're going to talk about some ways that you can tweak the look and feel of it and how it functions, such as enabling and disabling some of those proxy fields. We're going to talk about how you can require some fields. And then a, a couple situations where uh, you can make some, some more customized um, manipulations to it. After that, we'll look at the, the newest addition to proxy registration, which is the enhanced pop-up dialogues. We'll also briefly talk about proxy waitlisting, which is something that was added a few years back. We'll do a quick hands-on demo kind of walkthrough of the process, and then take a look at what happens behind the scenes when the proxy registration is actually occurring. After that, we'll, we'll leave some time for questions. So let's jump right in. So what is proxy registration? In a nutshell, it gives the logged on user the ability to register other people into a course or multiple courses. So this could be a parent enrolling their uh, kids in summer, summer camps or piano lessons. You know, these children might not even have email addresses. So how do you create an account for someone that doesn't have an email address when that's the requirement for creating the account? Um, we could be dealing with workforce development. So if you're a coordinator enrolling your employees in training courses, or if you're doing contract training, this is going to uh, give the ability to either make one payment all at once or prevent the, uh, I've been heard it uh, likened to herding cats, trying to get you know 25 of your employees to go to this website, go to this specific course, enter your information, sign up, you know, click here, click that, pay for your bill, and then submit that stuff to us. Um, this is a great way for you or one of your staff members to handle that all at once. All right, so turn it on. What you want to do is, again, this is a really old feature. So if you are not running a, an absolute dinosaur version of AceWeb, you've already got proxy registration in its most basic form. All you have to do is enable it in your AceWeb INI. And that is done with the proxy reg setting. You basically set it from none to enabled. Now, if you do want to use the, the new pop-up dialogue options that we're going to talk about today, there are new templates that you'll need to get. And that being said, when we talk about making changes to some of these templates, uh, a big reminder, always make a backup before you make changes. And when you do make changes involving one of our dynamic templates, such as ProxyReg.awp, you're not going to see your changes take effect until you recompile that page. So if you're trying to apply some of the changes that we're going to talk about and it's just not working, make sure that you are recompiling that template 
from your ACE Web Administration page. All right, so enabling and disabling fields. The template that we're talking about in question, the main template for ProxyReg, is just called ProxyReg.awp. This is located in your ACE folder, so typically INET pub WW root WConnect ACE. Uh, along with all of your other AWP templates. This is where you're going to be making most of the changes that we're going to be talking about. So to turn a field on or off on this template, you search for the field in question, and it will be encapsulated in a if statement. So um, let me see if you can see. Do we have a laser pointer? Hopefully you can see that. Um, you have this if statement that encapsulates this entire section. So this entire section is devoted to the, the badge field, so uh, badge name. In student manager field terms, it's NM badge. So if you know the field name for um, the field that you want to enable or disable, you can just do a simple find in whatever editor you're using, or if you're using template manager, find that field, make sure that the section is set to true. So it's basically saying, if this is true, then do all this stuff. The second thing that you need to set is the visibility. So by default, the ones that are disabled have a visibility set to false. If you leave that as false, then it, nothing's going to show up on your template. It'll just be hidden and behind the scenes. Now, when you set those two options, there's one other place, or rather two other places that you'll want to uncomment uh, a section of code. And that's going to be up in the top of the template itself in, a, in the JavaScript. These two slashes basically mean comment out everything on this line. So if we were doing this badge name field, we'd want to set the if statement to true, set visibility to true, and then take out these two forward slashes so that that doesn't comment out that line. And there's two spots on the, uh, the template up at the top that you'll see those. Now, if you've searched for the field that you want to enable and you don't find it on there, this honestly would be pretty uncommon. We've got all of the, the general ones that you would run into and then most of the other common ones that uh, you might want to enable. But if there is one that you do want to add to that, um, you can simply just copy you know, an example field from a, a different field, make sure you're picking the same character type, <clears throat> and then add in those same sections in your JavaScript. Now this gets into a little bit more kind of code editing that, than a lot of people may be comfortable with. So as always, talk to your tech if you need assistance with that, and we'll be happy to help you out. Okay, requiring fields. So ProxyReg works a little bit differently than you're typically used to with the sign-up page or when you're editing your profile. The requ setting required fields for those is done with an AceWeb INI setting called required fields. ProxyReg does not respect that whatsoever. So any fields that you want to set as required, meaning that the person registering the other person needs to fill these particular fields out, you need to enter into um, an area at the top of your ProxyReg template called required new proxy fields. Now there is another uh, section or another uh, of these hidden fields that's called required proxy fields. By default, this isn't enabled and this would only be if you're trying to make sure that accounts that already exist have a particular field filled out, maybe a field that you've enabled on proxy registration later on that prior records that were created don't have that filled in. Um, if you're familiar with the validate tag on required fields for your normal signup page, this is essentially working the same way. It's saying, I want you to do a, a final check and make sure that um, this field is actually filled in, even if they come back later and have an existing account that they're re-registering via proxy registration. Um, so basically all you need to do is add that field uh, with the, uh, excuse me, the full field HTML field name that's on the template. And you can just take a look at the actual code, find out what that field name is. It'll usually be something like TXT, BMO, so on and so forth. So fairly straightforward for requiring fields. 
Okay, so a special situation that we talked about, this was a customization done that allows people that don't necessarily want to capture the full birth date because some places are like, whoa, we can't ask for the birth date. That's you know sensitive information. We don't want people entering that into a web form. Or maybe the people themselves aren't wanting to enter their web their birth date into a, a web field. So what you can do is actually set this to the birth year only. And that's going to still give you the ability to track their age um, within you know plus or minus a year, obviously, but not require all three of those fields. Um, I wouldn't expect anyone to uh, be taking notes and writing down the instructions to do this. I put it in here as just kind of an example. Um, but if you go to our online help and you just search for proxy registration, this is pulled right from that section of the page. So if you do want to make this change, we've got pretty clear instructions on exactly how to do that there. All right, so next up, we're going to showcase the, the new dialogue options that we've put in. Now, this is an absolutely cutting edge new feature that we added with Build 60 of AceWeb. Um, in a nutshell, what we've done is just further enhance the process to make it even easier for the person that's doing the proxy registrations, whether they're you know, a parent doing contract training, uh, maybe it's you know, a husband registering a wife, or vice versa. We've made it a little bit more clear and intuitive and user-friendly. Um, we, we heard you guys, some of the places that have been doing proxy registration, especially the ones with like kids camps, and you add in that extra layer, maybe something like fee categories or memberships or family memberships, the process just kind of gets more and more complicated the more things you add. And we heard you guys saying that, you know, parents were, were getting frustrated, they were calling in, and that's more work for you guys. So hopefully this is going to be a way to make it a, an easier process for both you guys and your people doing the registrations. So as I mentioned, this is a, a brand new um, addition to proxy registration, so it will require version 60 or later. It's going to have some new templates, and to get those, either get with your tech, or if you are on that proxy reg help page, um, there is a link to downloading that and instructions on where you put those new files. All right, so let's look at what some of these new dialogue options are. So the first example here will be the pop-up that's displayed if in your system settings you allow creating accounts that have the same email address. So multiple name records using the same email address. And that is actually set in a different ASWEB INI setting called user ID source. If it contains the, the MOLT parameter, that is basically saying, um, I'm gonna allow people to use the same email address when creating a new account on ASWEB. So these first three dialogue options that we're gonna look at are pertaining exactly to this. If you allow multiple email addresses, or duplicate email addresses on this on multiple records, then this is going to pertain to those. So what's going to happen is if someone clicks the Enroll Someone Else button on a course, and they enter their own email address, the one that they use to log in with their own account, it's going to pop up and say, you've entered your own email address, and you have these options. You can close this message and enter information to create a new account for the person that you want to register. Basically saying, um, you've entered your own email address and that's okay. If you want to create a new account, do so. But option B is maybe you accidentally clicked enroll someone else by mistake and you wanted to actually enroll yourself. In that case, click the enroll yourself link and that will undo the proxy registration part that they've started and continue it as enrolling themselves. The second dialog option, again, for allowing multiple name records with the same email address, this time if there is another record that already exists that has that email address that they entered, it's going to pop up with another option. It's going to say, you've entered your own email address, you can create a new account for someone and enroll, enroll them in the course, or to enroll the person that's shown because I'm detecting another account that has this email address, you can close this form and click confirm and continue. Or again, if you made the mistake and didn't mean to actually enroll someone else, click this and it will start the process by enrolling you instead of someone else. The third option for dealing with the uh, multiple name records is if there are 
multiple accounts that use that same email address that the person logged in is using. So this one, again, it's saying if you want to create a new account, a brand new account, uh, then just close this dialog and then click the new name record option and we'll prompt you to enter in the, the proxy fields, the name, address, all that. Or maybe you didn't know that you can click the little radio button for an account that you've previously registered. And so if you want to do that, just simply check whichever name of the name record that you want to use. And then again, finally, the, the last option is just the, the sort of double check that they didn't actually mean to enroll themselves in the course. So we, we think we've covered all the bases on the, the multiple uh, email address dialogue options. The final pop-up that you would get is if you have the opposite, which is that your system does not allow duplicate email addresses on name records. If you click the enroll someone else and you enter your same email that you're logged in as, it's going to say you've entered your own email address and we don't allow that. You have to basically, you have to have a, a unique email address to create an account. So maybe you made the mistake and you actually meant to enroll yourself. If so, click here. Otherwise, you need to cancel and start over and choose a unique email address to create this account to enroll someone else as. Um, so those are the, the four new options and we hope that makes it a lot clearer to the people doing the registrations um, that will, will hopefully prevent some frustrated calls to your office and uh, you know cleanup of, of duplicate records that were unnecessarily created. Now this is a, a, a brand new feature like I said so we welcome your feedback if you can think of other situations and scenarios that would come up or that you've experienced with your your clientele please let us know uh, we're always improving these and um, you know yeah like I said we welcome your feedback on that now you may be thinking to yourself uh, this is all fine and dandy but I don't really like the wording that you've chose the great news is that you can customize all of the text that is done in these new dialog options yourself right on your installation to make that easier, what uh, we've recommended is that you actually add the path to these new text template dialog files to your awini.ini file. What this does is it allows your INI editor to recognize that those are files that you may commonly want to edit, and so it puts links to them up at the top of your ACEWeb INI editor page. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, if you can see my cursor, I'm just going to use this laser pointer, but uh, this is all one line. It may look like they are on separate lines, but it's just word wrap. So make sure that all you're doing is putting in extras, equals, and you'll have these in there by default, uh, but each entry is just separated with a space. Um, so enter those in and reload your comm servers, and then you'll see these show up on your ACEWeb INI editor at the very top and allow you to click those and edit them right from your ACE Web Admin page. So very, very handy. Next up is proxy waitlisting. So again, this has been around since I think 2017. Um, we debuted this at the, I believe it was the Scottsdale conference. Um, this is something that, again, you probably already have in your system, uh, unless you're holding, running at a really old build of ACE Web. Uh, all you need to enable this is Make sure that proxy registration is enabled and waitlisting is enabled for whatever particular course or courses you would want to offer this feature on. Uh, this does also work with Quick Pick, which is a, an optional module, and Express Registration Pages. So pretty cool ability there. All right, so let's try it out. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the proxy registration process. I'm going to get to our test site here. And I'm going to go ahead and log myself in. And then let's get back to our list of courses. And let's go with Mastering Student. Definitely a, a worthwhile course to take. So I may have already taken it, but I want to enroll someone else in this course. So I'm going to start the proxy registration process by clicking that Enroll Someone Else button. You can see right away that it detects that I've previously enrolled someone else. So it's saying, do you want to use this person? And uh, this is another change that we've made is we kind of rearrange the order of this. So that shows up first, as opposed to right away prompting you to enter the email address of the person you want to enroll. So if I were to click this, then it continues that 
proxy registration process using that existing record that I've previously done in the past, and so on and so forth. You finish the registration, everything is great. To get these new proxy dialog options to show up, we would need to enter my same email address. So this is the one that I'm logged in with. Enter that and I hit OK. And it says, all right, please note, you've entered your own email address. Uh, here are your options. Uh, if you want to create a new account, then just close this and then fill out the fields and you'll be good to go. But if you actually didn't mean to do that, close or I'm sorry, click this enroll yourself link and then it will start the process of enrolling you in the course. So um, pretty pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, we, we definitely welcome the feedback. But um, we're hoping that it, it makes it very, very simple and easy for all your users. And okay, I'm not sure why it's asking me to log in again, but we we are we have been playing around with this test installation very recently. So, um, so click the the user that you want to enroll, enroll that you've previously registered, or enter their information to create that new account. Confirm and continue. The rest of the process is uh, straightforward. Obviously, our our test installation is not behaving very well. Let's try, let's try a local test. Well, it doesn't like that. Okay, you guys get the picture. You've seen a registration process before. Uh, the main thing is demonstrating those new dialogue options and uh, they're, they're very straightforward and hopefully that's gonna help you guys out, so. All right, next up, uh, let's see, we want to start from current slide. So what is actually going on behind the scenes when you go through a proxy registration? Enrollment confirmations get sent to the person doing the registration as well as the person that they registered. So uh, in those cases, if you are using your same email address, you're just going to get the one registration confirmation. It's, you're not gonna be duplicating those entries. Um, but if you are registering using multiple email addresses, those people will get an individual separate confirmation and then you'll get a copy. Likewise, if you've got Notify Office configured so that you get staff office notifications, whoever set in that um, office email field will also receive a notification that a registration occurred. In Student Manager, if you go to the registration of uh, the person that was proxy registered, it will have in red text the name of the account that registered them. So it's a good way to track, you know, this person was actually registered by someone else. And that is all of our new features in a nutshell. So Sharon, do we have any questions that popped up? Okay, folks, if you have some questions, this is the time to do that. I'm not seeing any right now, Jason, but they know where, oh, here we have one. Let's see what we have. Um, oh, a comment. The duplicate email address is an issue in our office. This is very helpful. Thank you for that, for that feedback. We appreciate it, and we'll enjoy hearing some more success stories from those of you that are using proxy registration. Thank you, Susan. Um, um, oh, I was go just ahead. going to comment. I've been I've been silent here. Um, I would suggest that if you're uh, if if any of you want to try this out, go to the Aceware sandbox. Uh, and again, um, Jason, if you want to go to the Aceware homepage and uh, show them the Ace Web portal. Um, so basically, if you go to Aceware.com, go to demos you're gonna see what's called AceWeb Portal. And that is a sandbox of AceWeb. And again, I would, uh, I think Cheryl is updating that as we speak here. <clears throat> I believe that what you could do there is go ahead, create an account, and then go in and experiment with uh, registering a colleague. Again, all of the AceWare team are in that demo database. So you could do Chuck at AceWare, Jason at AceWare, and uh, we'd be happy to have you register us for a bunch of courses to check it out. But that way you can kind of play with it uh, before you uh, decide how you might want to implement it at your place. So very good, excellent. 
great suggestion. They should spend some time in that ACEWEB sandbox and try those examples. There's lots of good stuff there for you to practice with. Um, let's see. Just another thank you. Thanks, Star. Glad you're here today. Um, we're looking ahead into September, and we're going to have a 30,000-foot view of student managers' import and export tools. We get lots of questions about importing and exporting, and so we're going to go over all of those tools that are available and how you can use those. That's our next user webinar in mid-September. And we hope you can join us there. It's open for registration. I am seeing a question here, Jason. Can you enroll more than one person by clicking multiple oh. names from the list of people <laughs> that you have read, previously registered? Or do you still have to do each one separately? Jason, you want to share hey, some good news for Rita sure, here? Sure. Good, good, good question. So. The ability to select multiple people at once is something that we've kind of talked about and tossed around but is not currently implemented. So you would need to go through each enrollment process individually. So, uh, But again, that is something that's crossed our minds and we are looking into that. But right now, um, you would still need to go through the process individually because it involves a lot of, you know, okay, what's the course that we're talking about? What's the you know, additional options? And for each one of those, it's kind of a separate registration process uh, each time you change the person being registered. So, so yeah, Rita, we've heard you. We've discussed it a lot, and you may see that in a future development. So hang in there with us. We, we, we know it's on your list. Um, more thank yous. Uh, lots of people that are trying to use Proxy Reg now for contract training. Good luck, Sarah. We hope this helps. Uh, Karen, thanks for your comment. We're glad you're all with us. But I'm not seeing any other questions right now, just accolades and thanks. And so we're going to let you all get back to your work, whether you're at home or at the office. Looks about like 50% of you are back in the office, and that's good news. That that makes my day, makes my summer, really. So. With that, we're going to let you go. We appreciate you joining us. This is recorded, so you'll have the recording available tomorrow, and you can find Jason's PowerPoint slides and things in our webinar archives to revisit as needed. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We hope to see you again next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.